And we're live. Hello in humanoids. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome How to another you? in humanoids live. I'm your host, Bart Nunley. Right here beside me, as always, your co-host, my beautiful wife, Letitia. Hi, guys. Also with us tonight, two more beautiful blondes, as always, Krista Michael Tweedy and Hollywood Brandy Butcher from the Blondes and Booze. How you doing, ladies? Doing real good. How are you? Doing good. good. Doing good. Good to hear. Yeah, it's good to hear. We got a great show lined up for you tonight. We got a fantastic guest, one of my good friends. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna like what he has to say. He's got a lot of, a lot of. It's like the coolest guy in cryptozoology, right? Yeah. Can you say that? Yeah, I would agree. Other than me, of course, right? Maybe I'm. Not, I might be the second coolest, but he's the, he's definitely the coolest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna get right to it here in a minute. So. Maybe have some something that you want to yeah, say here. Yeah, I want to do the first. prayer request. First of all, just let me apologize for last week. I'm sorry that I kind of had a little breakdown on you all. I just needed to say what I said, and I just want to apologize, guys. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to freak out like that. So um, this week we have prayers. Uh, we still need to pray for Daryl Denton. He's still not a par. Uh, Catherine Gay and Roger, Chris, Krista Tweedy and her family. Brandy Butcher and her family, Vic and Vera Gulati, Cowboy 4572's wife, Cindy, Scott's Life's daughter, Megan, Anna and Kevin Jones, Gina Cook and her family, Mickey G and her son, Brandon, Hawk, spilling tea with Spunky Sparky. She says she'll be back. Give, about, give her a couple more weeks and she'll be back on. She still needs lots of prayers. Uh, Robert Basovsky, mm -hmm. Sam Burton, Trey Hood, Auntie Honey, hope you're feeling better. Yes, uh, Auntie. Mark Staten, Sherry Griffey, Angie Napier and her mom, Maddie Chap, her grandmother had surgery, open heart surgery, and we're hoping that she's doing okay. Brother Heck, Josh and Nellie Turner, and the PRT family, Matt Imch, Angela Bennett, Mindy Masters, uh, friend Eddie, John and Amy Long, Seth Squatchers and Andrew and family, Felicia Humphreys, uh, Gwen Hunt's granddaughter Zoe uh, lost her stepfather and she's going, is always going through some hard times about that. She said she was really close with him. So he was really good to her and she's just having some hard times right now. Randy Hutchins, Tyrone Tricky, Chuck Lindsay and his family, and Melissa Panay and Kevin Panay. And then happy birthday. To all the March birthdays, Mary Plyer, Tyler Oliver, Peter Frampton, Sandra Key Ward, and Mark Maycheck. And happy I'm, birthday, guys. Happy birthday. Yeah, I just want to say, say chat is that. moving so fast, and I see right. everybody that's saying hello to us. And hello, I just everyone. It's just like would be impossible for me to type back <laughs> to everybody. So. It's, it's, it's hello, moving fast. Wolf Brothers and, uh, like, holy and, so. and sister. Yes. Yes. So right. we got we got a great guest tonight, everyone. I hope you I hope you really enjoy the show. And if you do, be sure to hit the like button. Uh, if you're a subscriber, please make sure that you're still subscribed. I keep getting messages, and you guys know what that's all about. So uh, if you don't mind, check check that for me. And without further ado and delay, we're, we're going to bring up our guest, Mr. Lyle Blackburn. Hey, how you doing, how Lyle? Good. Hi. How are y'all? Good. Yeah, good, brother. Yeah. How's life been treating you lately? It's good. It's always good. Always uh, fun and exciting and uh, adventurous. You never know what's going to happen uh, from day to day. So I like it. And it's uh, right. always good. Yeah. yeah. So Lyle is my head banging brother. He, if you guys didn't know it, I'm sure most of you know this, but Lyle's in a band, uh, mm -hmm. a very, very good band. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I first heard heard you guys play, uh, I was yeah. like, I've never heard this style of music before, right? And so I, I couldn't really pinhole it into one category. So I had to make one up for you, brother. It's Western Gothic metal. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, as an artist, you have to appreciate any kind of uniqueness that you, 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 you see or experience, whether it's music or art or poetry or film you know and i have to tip my hat for you you and your band ghoul town y'all really really rocking out to your own your own little sound there and it's i really like it everybody check check out ghoul town uh as soon as this is over you 
maybe buy buy one of my brother Lyle's CDs or something. You know, you're really gonna like it if you like rock and roll. You're gonna love Ghoul Town. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, it's kind of a blessing and a curse to have such a unique sound because people ask, "What kind of music do you play?" I'm like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. We're just Ghoul Town. I just and told you, brother. It's <laughs> Western goth I'm metal. I'm gonna tell him to uh, talk to Bart and Unley. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you know, I've never heard anything that sounded quite like you guys, and I, you know, I've been uh, in a band myself. I've spent almost ten years in a band, and I still like to listen to the '80s uh, metal and '80s music. And mm -hmm. you know, but if I, if I had to come up with a a genre uh, for any of these bands that I've heard, you know, I never had had to do that before. They always fit into you know one genre or the next. But you guys, you know, you're you're outstanding in your field and. You know, you're really, you're really rocking the place. So keep up that good work, man. Looking forward to your next CD. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's so good. tell us how you got involved in uh, all these in humanoid subjects that people call cryptids these days, brother. Well, you know, as far back as I can remember, I, I was a fan of movie monsters, horror movies and stuff, you know, and I can remember uh, watching dark shadows on the television when I was a kid and I, I couldn't even understand yeah. the plot, but I it's like had werewolves and vampires. That's, that was good enough for me. And, uh, Same they, here. you know, and, and so I love those, you know, all that kind of spooky stuff. And my father uh, is an avid bow hunter and has been all his life. So from the time I could walk, I was in the woods and, you know, with him camping and hunting and fishing. And then when I was in third grade, they used to pass around those scholastic book things that you could buy books from. And I got a book yeah. called Strange But True by Daniel Cohen. And that had stories of, had, had little short chapters, but there was one on Bigfoot, Yeti, and the Loch Ness Monster. And that was the first time I had heard of this stuff. And I, that just really fascinated me because this was like sort of quote unquote real life monsters, you know, in wooded areas and, or, or at least in uh, remote areas. So, yeah. you know, I, I just thought that was the coolest thing. So then, you know, then later, you know, I found some other books and I saw the movie, the legend of Boggy Creek, which dramatized sightings of a Bigfoot like creature in Southern Arkansas, only about three hours from where we lived in the Dallas Fort Worth area of Texas. So that really was, was the thing because that was so much closer to home, you know, it's like, okay, the Yeti, but that seems so far away or Loch Ness yeah. Monster and even Bigfoot was, you know, at the time it was all just talk of Pacific Northwest, but legend of Boggy Creek was like basically in my own backyard. The, little town it just looked like every ubiquitous place where we had been hunting and it was swampy and spooky and that that just fascinated me and that just kind of carried forward throughout life i i ended up i have a degree in a bachelor's degree in english and i was good at writing and i was good at music and i played in bands since i was in high school and as we got bigger and I, I mean, I would be on the tour bus reading like Bigfoot books and stuff. And they would be like, what is this? You know, I was like, I love this stuff, you know? And, and so it just, it was just something I was, I just did because I liked it. And then later on ended up writing the book, the beast of Boggy Creek, which you know, the history of all the uh, science, Boggy Creek stuff. And that kind of all of a sudden uh, then suddenly people responded well to that. People invited me to speak on the subject and I, and there was more sightings and I continued research. And then all of a sudden here I am. <laughs> right. The rest is history as they say. Right. Now, have you ever, Lau, have you ever got a chance to go uh, see if you could spot this about monster yourself? I know you've probably been down here a million oh. times, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, from the get go, um, you know, I began going in the area and, and talking to witnesses or people who had uh, perspectives on this and then began to go into those, you know, river bottoms down there, um, just taking in the land, getting a sense of the history and where people had reported these sightings. And, you know, and of course, hey, I might be able to see this 
myself. And it, the way, the way that Southern Arkansas I mean, part is, it really just feeds right into the eastern portion of Texas. And all that is kind of the piney woods. It's a yeah. habitat, bottomland, very thick and, you know, a lot, of, a lot of woods and water. And so I was familiar with East Texas because that's where my family was from. And uh, so this was all part of that area. So over the years, you know, I all sorts of stuff has happened, you know, from finding tracks to something howling to something following us to even uh, I, I didn't really have a sighting until 2021. And even at that, I it wasn't a very lengthy or up close and personal sighting, but I did see something in May of 2021, uh, finally, that was in an area where we had been numerous times and a lot of spooky stuff and encounters had happened in even other people's reports. So, uh, you know, I've been on, on that trail for years and, and uh, hopefully there'll be more to come. Right. So how many years exactly have you been looking for this, these things, brother? Would you say? Well, yeah, I, I would say how many? Uh, God, it's been a, a, a long time since I was actively because prior to that, um, I was in a group of, of Texas Bigfoot researchers, and that kind of you know prior to that, I and this would have been um, late two thousands or something. You know, I didn't really realize it was organized teams. You know, it's sort of like Bigfoot was there and you follow this stuff. And then I, I became clued in that there was actually some organizations and some people that were serious about doing this. So so right. I, I was doing stuff with them and then later kind of went into the Boggy Creek thing once I decided that this this needs to be written about. You know, it's everybody knows of it, but there's no book. I'm going to know yeah. all your history. So it's been. Uh, yeah, I've had a lot yeah, it's a fantastic time. book. Everybody go check out um, The Beast of Boggy Creek. I did a great job. And how many books are you up to now? Uh, eight. Eight. Yeah, that's a wow. very substantial body of work there, brother. Mm -hmm. And every book that I've read that you've written has been excellent. Uh, excellent reading. Thank you. So can't, can't recommend you highly enough, whether it comes to your music or your writing. Uh, both outstanding. Hey, Cheryl. You know, I, I try to, with the books, you know, I mean, writing is something I've been good at. I, I've written for some rock magazines and oh, I, was really? for, I was a writer for Rue Morgue magazine, which is a horror movie you can buy in, you know, yeah. or whatever. Um, and so I was always good at writing, I guess. It just came naturally. And and in between the music or at times the music paid basically nothing. Um, I've yeah, had yeah. You know, all, almost all, well, I'd say almost all the freelance jobs were writing and I've only had really a couple of actual jobs and that was right. That was a job writing. So that kind of was hand, you know, hand in hand with the music. But the one thing I try to bring to the table is with the books is to be, is to write very well researched, very engaging books that yes. that incorporate obviously the history and the encounters, but just the whole phenomenon um, of people in our day and age saying they have seen quote unquote monsters, and just that the fact that that even happens, you know, and it can change a person, it can change a whole entire mm -hmm. town, you know, into something just from something like that that some people might think is silly but but we all know that there's people that have been affected and and this outward sort of either celebration or you know we have dogman festivals mothman festivals there's people come together because people are fascinated so i really yeah. try to offer something in these books that can encompass the history and to help researchers who may want to go to these areas. It gives them some sort of a sense of the history as well as what are the recent sightings, you know? Yeah. Well, you do excellent work, brother. I know everybody that, uh, that reads your books really loves them. Never heard anybody say anything bad about it, any of your writing. 
It's fantastic, fantastic job. You remember how it used to be in the seventies, right? When, where nobody could hardly come out and uh, admit that they'd seen an inhumanoid, or like Bigfoot or Dogman, which they called a werewolf back then, not Dogman, but right. Mothman and things of that nature. You know, no one could really come forward without risking a lot, right? It might cost you everything back then to tell the truth, but now it's a very different time. So are you getting a lot more reports now of uh, these inhumanoid creatures than, say, 10 or 15 years ago? Uh, you know, of, co of course, I get more just simply because more people probably know me or feel they should report their sightings. Mm -hmm. But you can certainly feel a different sense of the way people report to you now than, say, 15 years ago. They were much more hesitant back then because you know that for the same thing you're saying it's like people could be ridiculed and you know but over time where we've seen a lot of these cryptid shows on television you know a run of finding bigfoot where you look at it and say well this guy looks like my neighbor he doesn't seem crazy and he says he saw yeah. something maybe i can come forward with my story so i get a lot of even stories there was a woman who who had came came to me with a report from Honey Island Swamp down in, in Louisiana with a famous yeah. Honey Island Swamp monster. And she said, and this encounter happened back in 1968. And she says she's pretty much told hardly anyone because back in those times, people just thought she was nuts or just shut up or the whole nine yards. Even her husband was kind of like, meh. And finally, she felt that she really wanted to get it documented and, and thankfully shared it with me. But but you see this transition of people willing to share um, things now because they realize, OK, I'm not the only one seeing this. And the culture mm -hmm. has come around to, to where people aren't judged so harshly. People love paranormal. In fact, I mean, on Facebook, everybody's like, yeah, I saw something. It's everybody sharing it. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, the one good thing I can say about this, uh, the rat, the rash of uh, reality TV concerning Bigfoot and, and things like that, is that it does inspire people to come forward and, and tell their own story, right? And they see that, the you know, the guy who just told the story they listened to, he hasn't been eaten. You know, no one, no one's thrown him in jail or nothing. So they're like, okay, yeah, let's just go ahead. And, and then they choose someone to tell their story to. And that's, it's amazing. Some of the, the stories that, that I get have been lately been really amazing. So I'm so glad that the culture has really done a 360 uh, degree turn and come to accept the fact that people who see these things are actually telling the truth, right? Of course, so for people who hear the story, it's, it's their opinion of whether it's true or not. But if the story actually happens to you, then you know that it's true, right? So, you know, you saw something down there at in, in Falk, Arkansas. You don't know what it was. But you know you saw something, that's a fact. But when you tell people that, it's their opinion whether they want to believe you or not, right? So the perception of, of humans is really, as a species, we're really coming around to uh, accepting that which we were unable to accept previously. It's a really, really a good thing. I'm glad that it, you know, it finally happened. I've been waiting for forever. Uh, but glad that it finally happened. I'm glad that I'm here talking to you, Lyle. Right. I mean, we've had we've lived through a similar chunk of time to where we've seen yeah. the way things have, have developed with these kinds of sightings and what people report and how they can report them and all this uh, fascination and cable shows and things that never existed. And it's it's certainly an ever changing, um, you know, phenomenon and, and it, and the, what I've gotten from it, and I'm sure as you, that the more people that come forward and the more comfortable everybody is, the more you realize there's so much crazy stuff out there that we can't explain. It's not as simple yeah. as when I read that book, it's Bigfoot and he lives in the Pacific Northwest and there's yeah. the Yeti and he, he lives in the mountains and there's a Loch Ness Monster. That is such a, a uh, 
small percentage of all the phenomenon, all the different creatures and how far and wide stuff is reported across the world that we realize the whole world is full of strange things. And it's OK if you saw it because you yeah. saw what you saw. We may not be able to say exactly what it is, but it doesn't you're not uh, crazy if you saw something weird because a lot of people have, you know. Right. Well, and the more people come forward with truth, true stories and not, you know, some made up stuff or um, notoriety or attention, the more people come forward, the stronger we become in our knowledge. And that's something that we've really been deprived of uh, all our lives, especially concerning these in humanoids or what people call cryptids. Uh, there's so much more than one, so many more types than one, so much more to these things. And, science can actually explain right now. Of course, science doesn't uh, accept the existence of any inhumanoid, but uh, what a lot of people are experiencing is is beyond um, beyond the, the realm of the natural uh, laws of physics. You know, uh, these things can turn invisible. I know, I know because I've, I've seen that myself, brother. They have a, they have a, exhibit a form of mind control and all in human which have basically the same abilities which is very very strange so uh yeah they can cloak they can walk across a muddy field and never leave a footprint or they can if they want or just leave one you know right out in the middle of the field uh, they can instantly disappear i've experienced that before uh, while fishing one time and so yeah there's a lot more to these things and we're a bit we've been led to believe that they're just physical creatures Nothing special, just extremely lucky, right? Uh, Bigfoot is, has to be the most the luckiest species ever to exist on the planet. <laughs> to go every day with our technology, which triples almost daily, uh, and still escape detection, right? We still can't study these creatures in their natural habitat. We can't even take a good picture of one. All right. Evidently, right? Right. That seems uh, like a yeah, hard task to even take the photo. So, yeah, there's a lot more going on here than the simplified version of, you know, there's an animal in the woods. And that 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 sort of approach was natural in the beginning. But now you got 50 some odd years. You have to try to to except that th there's more to it somehow, however you want to define it, because mm. it, it's defying logic, you know, yes. given and assuming that people who say they see these things truly saw something that was met that description. If that is true, then then how do you explain that? And so I think that's another thing that I've seen evolve over time is the ways in which people have proposed that this phenomenon can go on. And of course, this mm -hmm. is, we're all speculating, but each person who has an experience can add something to it. So we, we have mm -hmm. some defined uh, speculations as to what these creatures are individually or as a whole. Um, and, and that's something that this long period of, people reporting things and unable to get our hands on it in a solid yeah. form or prove that's a natural progression. So I, it I, is, it is bro. 50 or 60 yeah. years of searching for something and not taking a single step forward uh, and gaining any knowledge. You must step back or, or pause and rethink your approach, right? Perhaps your logic isn't um, what it should be. So, a lot of people now are, are coming to realize that there's more to life out there than what we can see every day. And it's, it's, it's such a great time, such an interesting time to be alive, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's I always kind of thankful. I feel like I've lived through the best time period, you know. It's, the 80s, of course, yeah. Was, Everybody knows that. In the, <laughs> in the 80s and 70s. and uh, They were all good, right? formative times and seeing the development of, you know, these things that we were interested in and we love. It's like in, in the, 
in the uh, in our lifetimes, it's it's been a really cool phenomenon and something to be able to follow to the point now that we're here, not even in the same state, and and all yeah. five of us being able to converse about this subject while other people listen. It's mind blowing that we can that we do that, and we can get our heads together and just at least try to discuss or <laughs> speculate. Right. So each each person might have a little piece of the puzzle and separately. We just have pieces of the puzzle. But once we all get together, we can finally put that whole entire puzzle together. Right. Right. So that's uh, it's just wonderful how things are shaping up and people seem to be open to the idea that uh, the natural flesh and blood uh theory about these in humanoids just, just isn't cutting it it's not explaining anything and it's really becoming more and more uh less less possible as each day goes by and we don't have any new proof uh especially bigfoot you know that's that's the one that most of most of the people in this field believe in or pretend to believe in or talk about but yeah it's uh it's just amazing how things are going and I'm just glad to be here, and I, I never thought that I would be on YouTube talking to you, brother. That's one thing I didn't never thought that would happen, but here we are, and you have your own podcast too, uh, Monstro Bizarro. So everybody should go and and subscribe to you, and of course the Blondes and Booze, and we're, we're going. I think we're going. We're in for a big a big change here very soon, and um, I can't wait. I really can't wait to. Everyone knows the truth of these. In human ways, not just a few thousand people, right? Right, that would be something. If uh, yeah, any any of this, any one of these creatures or something is in some way proven, however however that measures up, yeah, you know that it would just be mind blowing, and it would just blow the doors off of everything that we've maybe tried to get our minds around or followed, or especially people right. who've witnessed this and maybe people didn't believe them. If any of these creatures in any inhumanoid or, or any strange phenomenon is able to be proven or reveals itself, if, if it be, it would just be crazy. <laughs> yeah, it would. Well, you know, it's, I think that, uh, you, you and I both know the only way that anything's going to be proven is having a specimen there on the table to dissect. And I, by nature, at least in my own opinion, by these things, the very natures that I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But I do think that a lot of things will be revealed concerning these things very soon. You know, I, I know that at least the type that I and my family encountered uh, can't be killed with bullets. So that's a little piece of the puzzle, right? Uh, we had a whole roof full of people shooting at these things one night back in 1975, and uh, no way they could have all missed, but no blood, uh, nothing to show that this thing was ever really there, no footprints. So, yeah, it's. I think we're going to have, gonna know a lot in the, in the coming year or two. We're going to know even more than we – we're just now beginning to realize right now that something's going on that – is beyond our our comprehension. And I think in a year or two, we're all going to know uh, the reality of, of what these things uh, are. As far as are they real? Or are they people's imaginations? You know, are they are they making stories up just for attention? But I, I do believe that we're all going to we're all going to find out soon the truth. So all we have right. to do is wait, brother. We have to just keep fielding these reports and and making making the truth known and that's really all you can do when you have a, a sighting of, of one of these things right you can't prove it to anyone and the people out there who they keep yelling prove it prove it prove it just so frustrating I've, I've heard that since 1975 and of course i can't prove anything but yeah uh, it's uh i think the times are turning and the, the tide is uh, changing in, in our favor finally and something something's going to uh really come forward i think we're going to come forward and come into a lot of knowledge here very soon right that's that, my personal opinion I, i'm hoping that's true but just the fact that so many people now can come out and uh tell their true story and not lose their family or their job or their 
the house. You know, you know, back in the 70s, people were ridiculed so mercilessly that they even uh, took their own lives when they come out and told the truth. So luckily, we're not at that point in time now. So I think a lot more is going to be be learned. Right. Yeah, it's definitely more acceptable. And, and, you know, and what I tell people who are skeptics, you know, it's like, look, you know, you, even if we even if you throw out 90 for 5 percent of what we might call a vague sighting or someone we mm. suspect is looking for attention or I didn't feel like that, there is a certain core of these that come from credible people or people maybe you get to know you might have had multiple like, like your family there's there's multiple people who saw it it yeah. wasn't just one person so there's those core of ones that when you look at those and you analyze them and you kind of add it all up they just cannot be explained something was seen something went on some kind of entity of some sort was involved right. that so right there Really, yeah, that's, yeah. that right there is enough. You know, it, we don't have to assume that every single one is a, you know, the best sighting ever. And yeah. it doesn't matter. It it matters that if there's a core of these that cannot be explained and in anybody's research, you know, I've come across uh, witnesses that I've interviewed and and sort of gotten to know those people since then and followed yeah. up and met their families a lot a lot in fout for me because i've concentrated a lot of research in that area but i can guarantee you i would you know stake stake my life or claim that this person saw what they said they saw now i can't say what they saw or prove it is you know but they saw something and that's all it really takes is just one person to see it is is sufficient to say there is something going on here that you know we we can try to research or that we can try to prove you know right and that's all we can do when we have these experiences too is come forward and share you know it doesn't do anybody any good if you don't tell anyone um, right the good that we do is by sharing the truth and that that's what i think we're supposed to do and and we both know that folklore can't kill all your farm animals, right? Hallucinations <laughs> can't turn really. your doorknob at night or beat on the side of your house. Right. So something's definitely going on, and it's up to us to to find out what and why. So that's I think that's our job, brother. People like you and I, you know, we we reach a lot of people through our writing, uh, yeah. not so much through YouTube uh, yet, but through our writing, we've reached hundreds of thousands of people all over the world and uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's our duty to, to tell the truth and and spread the spread the truth that these things are real and they're not uh somebody's thinking of someone's imagination or or just a fiction that someone's made up you know yeah absolutely uh, and you know the more the more somebody looks into it the more they realize that i think the average person who just has some cursory knowledge of maybe Bigfoot or Chupacabra or something, they, they don't really, uh, they, they don't have the perspective of somebody like us who's interviewed people who responded, you know, were scared, were emotionally yeah. challenged by these sightings and, and the circumstances around it. They're reading something on the internet or make, you know, there's all the stupid blurry photos or, you know, hoaxes and whatever else. Yeah, they just the freezer. they just yeah they they hear of that like you know because that gets everywhere. There's a the big Georgia Bigfoot hoax, but yeah. the real good stuff seems to have you know the hardest time getting traction. It's all the bull bull that right yeah the hoaxes get, get millions and millions of views right and like that I was talking about the other night they I think it was uh, the people from British Columbia or Canada you know they bought the a gorilla skull replica and then pretended like they found it in a creek and those guys made millions you know and yeah. uh, uh the hopes of the bigfoot georgia bigfoot hoaxer he's even though he was ousted uh as a hoax and eventually confessed he's still doing it you know and people are still believing that stuff and the hoaxes never really die that's the frustrating part uh, even when they're were they're proven to be a hoax, then five years later you got a bunch of new people coming in and they they discover that 
and they, they're like, hey, look here, you know, this is real. Like, no, and I hate, yeah. to, hate to be the one to tell my friends uh, when they send me a picture or ask me a question about this or that. And I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, but this was a hoax. It's a proven hoax. And yeah. now in the day of AI, oh, good Lord, you know, it's just oh, no hoax it. barred, you know. It's already, I mean, I've already seen debates and arguments over AI pictures. I'm like, it's, yeah. it's 100% AI. And so it's distracting us and causing more uh, problems because, and AI, it's not even it's where it's going to get. It's it's just no. sort of out there. It's going to get better to where we can't tell. And I think we've always known that there's no way to, a picture is not going to prove it because even right. a picture five years ago, even if it was a great one, somebody's going to say that was Photoshop or it was somehow hoaxed. The only yes. way, and I'm not saying one way or another, you, you try to kill these creatures. I'm just saying that if you don't have something there to look at, it's never going to get proven because a photo or a video or some, especially some blurry photo. Mm -hmm. Sure. That might be one of these, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not mm -hmm. enough to never prove gonna be enough. It never has been. And, uh, it never will be. You look at the Patterson Gimlin film. It's amazing. You know how successful those two guys were at their venture. Right. And also yeah. amazing, equally amazing how they're the only ones that's ever been able to do that. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. yeah, no picture will ever be good enough. Everybody still debates whether the patty is real or yeah. a man in the costume, and they're never going to stop it. Even if, you know, even if some something kind of come out, some evidence come out, uh, say a man come out and said, hey, I wore that costume. And this man happened to walk exactly like patty, exactly. And what are the chances of an unknown primate or hominid in North America uh, uh, is going to mm -hmm. walk guy that says hey i wore the suit and i was never paid and i'm mad right so even if something like that comes out it's still you have the people who um are diehard believers and they're diehard skeptics and that's never going to change but we need something more than pictures we need you know we need physical evidence right right and and we have to try to to uh, separate ourselves from what we want to believe in and what is yeah. Uh, do have blinders and it's things like this if it's if it the, mm -hmm. if it, georgia's bigfoot guy we want it to be a bigfoot in in the freezer but if it comes out the guy's a hoaxer this is you know hog hog guts and a mask then so be it that's what it was move right. on exactly. you know and it's, it's okay to say that well that was not real i'm moving on it, you know it doesn't mean we don't believe in the possibility right. but um you know it's but there's a lot of emotion we're humans there's a lot of emotion involved and we want to believe and mm -hmm. i mean i'm still the same little kid who read that book and man you know this is the greatest stuff and i want all these creatures to be real but can i prove them they are no but mm -hmm. you know you there's that desire but to making sure that we're not uh making ourselves look bad by holding on to things that are proven or just don't add up or just not a good enough that photo is not good enough let's try to get a better one or, or whatever and elevate ourselves to um you know being balanced it's, it's okay to be skeptical that way you're not chasing red herrings you know you're really yeah. concentrating on that on that stuff or talking to people or going into areas where you feel like it's the most credible it's focusing, which I've done in Falk a lot. And you do an LBL in your areas because you've interviewed people there. You've had experiences there, you know, darn well, there's something going on. And, and so you're investing your time into what you feel is the best area and what you can economically do. Obviously we're not right. jet setting all over to you know, yeah, have private jets, you know, yeah, yeah people we think with cryptozoology means we have a, a, a that we have the the nameless millionaire that the faceless millionaire. Tom Slick, that, we don't we don't have a Tom Slick, yeah. do we, brother? I wish we did. I wish. I would yeah. take Martin Groves to uh, Alaska. Right. Look for that that those Bigfoot up there. He really wants to go up there. Maybe that's in the future. I don't know, but, but luckily for me, you know, I don't need any evidence. You know, the, 
my own experiences tell me what's real and what isn't. And um, like the Patterson film, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter to me if it's real or fake. I already know uh, these things exist. You know, uh, mm -hmm. eleven months we lived in this one location, and they were they were constantly messing with us. So, you know, like I said, they killed all our animals and, and all that scary stuff. So I already know they exist. And if the Patterson film turns out to be fake, uh, then it won't affect me at all. There's no it's, bearing on that. Yeah, no bearing on my belief. And but unfortunately, other people they might. You know, they, they look at the hoaxers and they say, oh, look at this. It's fake. I told you Bigfoot was fake. And it's just one hoax, right? When you have thousands and thousands of people out there saying that, hey, look, I've seen something. Uh, it's, I don't know what it was. It walked on two legs like a man, but it wasn't a man. So, so yeah, it's, uh, I, I never needed anything, any confirmation other than my own experiences to, to know that these things were out there. Now, what they are and what, what they're doing took a lot. It took me 50 years, and I've had had that long, you know, almost 48 years now. I've had that long to think about things and and research, you know, and, and read and talk to people and talk to hundreds of people. So the answers are out there. They, they really are. You just have to, to look very hard, and or you can just believe someone that you trust that has experiences like that. That's, that's the easiest route to... To knowledge, right? Is ask someone who knows, correct? Right. That's the way to success in life. If somebody has achieved something that you want to do and they've done it, that's the person to ask. Or if they've experienced a, uh, something that we're interested in, talk to that person right. because that's how you're going to gain that knowledge. And sharing the sharing this stuff gives you more perspectives than just your own. You know, you see, we see and experience what our own selves, but when you can take in all this other perspectives, you can try to have a better, uh, you know, formulate a better, um, you know, hypothesis on what yeah, it is yeah. dealing with and, and how do we, how do I best spend my time researching or whatever? Right. Well, luckily for us, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that's believers now uh, just because of the Patterson Gimlin film, you have millions of people believing in Bigfoot. So if, if it's not real, then it still has uh, yeah. achieved a, a, a very important role because we know that Bigfoot are real. And so if that's whatever it takes to arrive at the truth, brother, where, whether it's experience or um, experiments in the laboratory or whatever, as long as we arrive at the truth, then I think we're doing all right. It doesn't really matter which way we came by, the, by that knowledge. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's just a matter of trying to as best we can to pursue what is truthful and being open to taking the route required because you can't predetermine a route. You just have to follow just like a detective. You follow where the evidence leads. You don't, you know, have this thing and go one way. You just kind of have to be fluid. So yeah. I think that's always, you know, you ex and be open minded because we expect somebody who laughs at the subject, you know, we want them to be open minded, but we have to be the same way as to be open minded to, you know, everybody's input. You don't have to yeah. take it or whatever, but, you know, just be uh, open to to listening because that's how you gain knowledge. How we learn, right? How you yeah. And we just we learned a good lesson in that a few months ago, a lesson in human per perception, and also a good lesson in how you learn from other people with opposing opinions. And it all we all arrived at the truth, which is the most important thing. So, yeah, we just got to keep our, our minds open. And um, like I say, be skeptical. Uh, the skepticism, that's the natural state of every everyone. Right. And you hear something that's hard to believe you. And you, you don't believe it, but uh, there's you have to realize that there's things out there that can't be explained right right now at this moment. Uh, science can't explain everything. Science is not a finished product. It's an ever growing uh, body of knowledge and data. So you can't stand on a, a mountain that you call science and say everything that that science doesn't agree with is false because science 
isn't there yet, right? One day science might arrive at the at the point in time where it can't explain the supernatural with a natural explanation because but really you know that the supernatural is just a label that mankind has put out there and put onto something that we can't explain yet. But in reality, there is no supernatural. Everything that we see and hear is actually part of this natural world. We just don't understand it yet. Sure. Because Things that were once thought to be magic or something yeah. like that. Now we know, well, it looks magical. Fire looks amazing, but it's not magic. It's, it is uh, explainable by nature. So, yeah, yeah, supernatural is just what just something a blanket term to say that we don't yet know exactly what this is. Some something weird's going on. We can't scientifically prove it or understand. But uh, yeah. yeah, this you know, yesterday's supernatural is the future's fact. So right. What's the scariest story you've ever taken from a, a witness, brother? The best yeah. story. Yeah. Um. Well. <laughs> There, there are so many good ones over the years um, that range from, uh, <laughs> depends on, you know, like there's just some scary ones and there's some that really, I felt like the witness um, saw what they said they saw. I recently talked to a witness and one that I, I really have followed up on by someone. And I, I like a witness who maybe even doesn't believe in, encrypted or Bigfoot, you know, or whatever it is he's reporting because they're almost starting from a neutral point. You know, they don't, they don't yeah. have Bigfoot on the brain. They're just starting from zero. Um, but, but I got a report of a, of a guy who was fishing and he got out there before dark and he's out there with his father-in-law and um, they were about 50 yards apart on this river. And they, they go to this river a lot and they, they were, you know, got their rods and reels and they were there just as the sun was coming up doing some fishing. Nobody else was out there. And all of a sudden, like something splashed in the river. You know, like, what was that? You know, like a huge fish. Well, then they realized it happened again. It was a rock. It seemed like somebody was throwing rocks down boop, right into the water. So of course you're fishing. You're like, what's the deal? So that happened a couple of times and the guy turned around and yelled because mm -hmm. up on the bank, there's so, there were some woods up there. And he's like, Hey man, you know, quit throwing rocks down here is, you know, it's, just, it's not right. He was kind of pissed and, you know, yelled. well, got no real response. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go back to fishing. Well, again, the rocks start coming and finally, and, and he, you know, just fed up with it, threw down his rod and, ran up that hill and said, Hey, you know, this is an enough, man. Come, come out and show yourself. Quit interrupting our fishing. We heard this thrashing in the bush and he said, just all of a sudden from out of the trees came this tall hair covered thing that was standing there and it just came out and it's, he said it was standing not 15 feet from him. And of course he, he just in, complete uh, for just not not even understanding at first what he's seeing and trying to comprehend that this is it's not a person uh you know and it, he said it you know it flashes in your mind i'm seeing a bigfoot all these things very quickly um as to what it is and he said i mean this this is a very close encounter obviously this is like right. very close and he was he had a sidearm. He said he pulled it out and pointed it at and said, you know, back up or, you know, he's just yelling at it as if it was a person. And the thing didn't really respond to the firearm. It neither cared, you know, it didn't run or turn. It just stood there. And, uh, you know, and he, he was confronting it. And he said the thing just kind of turned and just went back in the woods. And there was some more thrashing around as if it was angry. And it just you know, went off in the trees. Well, he didn't want to pursue it. It was scary, but his father-in-law was down there and he saw the thing too. He didn't come up there and he wasn't as close, but he saw it. And so he goes back down there and he's like, 
and you know, father's like, what, what did you just see? He goes, I don't know. What did you see? And they both kind of come to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. I think it was a Bigfoot. And so, um, again, this guy was a, I've talked to him numerous times. He's very credible, but well-spoken, a young guy. I could tell that it affected him in, <laughs> yeah. in a way, um, that was, you know, created he just thought about it all the time he had seen this thing up close and he's since been back and tried to see it again and he hasn't that's how it works you know it's it just yeah. happens but uh that's one that just very recent and i feel like this re this uh, witness is very credible had no no you know he wasn't trying to say hey could you get me on a tv show or any of that he just he just he didn't, didn't really want to share where this even happened exactly because he was afraid of people coming there and um but you know those kind of reports where again it's like if we assume this guy saw what he said he saw i mean this guy there's no mistake about it there's, you can rule out costumes or illusions or anything else because he saw it that close and those are the ones where you you just say this is why we're doing it because that right there you cannot explain but something is going on and there's something up there so i'm i'm working on we had to wait through kind of got into winter and the, the temperature has been crazy up and down but it's starting to get warm so i'm hopefully gonna yeah. head up there. this is one where i would go out there and talk to the person and go into the have him take me down there to that place so i can look at it for myself and do some research those are the ones that i usually follow up on yeah. Don't you love it when somebody like that comes forward with their story and, and everybody's like, oh, it's just a bear. <laughs> Bears sure. walk over the high legs all the time, didn't you know? Yeah, like a grown weird. man can't tell the difference between a bear and an unknown primate or whatever at 15 feet. It's just you, right. <laughs> right. You can, and those, like I said, that's those ones where, you know, if it's you know okay it was 200 yards and it was i just saw it for a it was dark and it moved it well, okay there's room for error but with this guy it's like and if i rule out that he's not making it up and i feel 100 percent confident he's not 100 percent he he saw what we would call a bigfoot whatever that amounts to it's not yeah. a person it's not a suit it's not a bear it's not a wasn't even a dog man it was literally a bigfoot right well so you know i've talked to hundreds of people brother and many of them have been kind of ambiguous sightings that they knew it was something um not right or not normal but a lot of them have been really up close uh even closer than 15 feet so there is no mistaking in the humanoid for any other thing on earth when you're that close to it right, right. my good uh my good buddy uh uh, war well, his name is charlie they might as war chief now war chief, Char war chief yes he uh he was fishing um is war chief in here now it's elizabeth okay oh, elizabeth. hello elizabeth yeah he uh he was fishing and uh he was interrupted and he stood up and turned around and this thing was right there on him and when he stood up and turned around and this guy's like six six foot over six foot tall he was, he was something big and hairy and he was staring right into its lower belly uh, almost at at its privates that's how tall this thing was wow. and uh, there's no mistaking uh something like that if you're that close he looked up into its eyes you know and red eyes and uh, next thing you know he's waking up uh, he somehow lost uh lost some time there so yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of things happening out there, brother, and, and you cannot, you cannot be so cynical that you just don't believe anyone, and you cannot be so skeptical that you think everyone is either lying, misidentifying something, or, or hoaxing. Right? You know, it's a, all right. You just can't, be, you can't be that way and ever learn anything. And I, and I have a lot of friends that are, are pretty skeptical of all this stuff and um they know that i'm not a liar and they know that i speak the truth but yet they're still skeptical so maybe some folks can't be reached but i think there's a lot more of us that's uh 
that can be reached and are willing to to listen to people like us and uh, it's the knowledge is that we seek the knowledge in everything and we seek the truth in everything and, and that's what that's what we're getting here and if you can turn around and bump into a bear a bear's hairy, hairy belly and uh, mistake it for a bigfoot or vice versa then you know something something's not quite right there right and like to your point there is a i think there's a certain number of people that they simply will not accept this they they're going to be whether it's from fear or you know i don't want to be associated with somebody who, they have a notion about people who believe in bigfoot or werewolves or whatever they don't want to be associated so they they are never going to accept this i mean perhaps unless you had a body in front of them they're just not open to that and that's mm -hmm. human nature i mean some people have preconceived notions you know they, yeah. they have a notion and they're going to stick to that you you yes. have to yeah. prove them still right. other otherwise um so so definitely there there's just a certain number of people but who, who you know who cares there, there's always those doubters there's plenty of other people that um, are interested in this and are open to listening and uh, want to, you know, uh, embrace things that are not considered mainstream or maybe considered strange. Uh, but we're the kind of people who, who relish that. So it's all good. But uh, yeah, it's, it just depends on the, uh, yeah, like Kevin said, there's just much fear of judgment and there's all sorts of psychological things that play into it beyond simply mm -hmm. the black and white of, well, this person saw this and you should believe in it. There's so many other complicated, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, human perceptions involved. So it, it is an the whole phenomenon of this, as you know, it's it, we, we not only encounter what we can not explain in the puzzle of, of cryptids and in humanoids and everything else to try and, but you also inter, intermingle that with the way people respond to things that aren't right there in front of them. Everybody handles that in a different way, especially if it's a subject that involves a little bit of open mindedness. A lot of people don't have that or the, even the capacity to to embrace it so it, it's just so many things at play which creates a lot of uh division among even so-called believers uh yes that it, it's a tough topic yeah you're right brother when i first come online in 2005 i, I thought well now i'm over 40 years old i I'm too old to learn how to use a computer. That's for the kids, right? But uh, my son and daughters finally convinced me to get one. And, Hello, Jitesh. How are you, brother? Thank you for that that donation. Finally convinced me to get one. And the first thing I did was I'm, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go and I'm going to check out the Bigfoot scene. And I figured it would be everybody looking for the truth, getting along, uh, sharing data, uh, and all that, but I couldn't have been further from the truth because it was a like a circus, right? We had two camps for the flesh and blood and the uh, supernatural, and they were just constantly at war with each other. <laughs> it was, <laughs> oh, it was, a, it was the dangest thing I ever seen. It was a real surprise to me that uh, people weren't working together, right? Everyone had their own opinion, and uh, if your opinion was different than theirs, then you were wrong. So I learned a lesson there. And, uh, luckily, we're, we're starting to uh, gain some momentum, right? I don't believe these things are flesh and blood all the time. I believe they can be when they want to be. But when they don't want to be, then they're they're not. So how do you explain that with the Gigantopithecus blocky hypothesis or descendant of, of Gigantopithecus? You can't because Giganto was never even, to my knowledge, was never even accused of having any of these abilities. It was never accused of being anything other than an extinct species of ape. When the apes do not, they cannot disappear at will. They cannot walk across snow or mud without leaving footprints. You know, they cannot uh, talk to you telepathically like these humanoids do. And 
can't make you lay down and go to sleep and you're you're deathly afraid and you just suddenly lay down and go to sleep i've taken report after report of that so giganto has never been accused of having any of those traits that i'm aware of so you have to after 50 to 70 years of, of going along those lines of logic we have to expand our line of logic or change it all together to come to some kind of answer and unfortunately science has not been able to provide us with a single answer uh in the last 50 years so uh, we're at the point now where we're looking to not looking to science necessarily of course we want it to be proven but we're looking for the truth of a thing and not the science and the proof of, the, of a thing i think that's where we're at right now and uh, i think we're in the right place and the time is right God bless you too, Jitesh. The time is right, and uh, people are stepping up and they're willing to share, right? They're, they're not scared that they're going to lose their, lose their jobs or their wives. Or, you know, sometimes people, you know, back in the day would see these things and they would tell no one, not even their own wife or family. So we have, we're totally moving away from that point of view. Uh, public consciousness is. is totally moving into an area that we've never been in before and that's acceptance of something that's other than scientifically provable theories so really it's really it's really an exciting time to live it's so grateful that, I, that i'm still alive and made it uh this long in my life you know a lot of my friends haven't haven't been so lucky but i think we're in for a really uh really wild roller coaster ride here with these inhumanoid creatures, you know. Uh, what do you think about Dog Man? Well, I know everybody's wondering, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think people are actually seeing um, a semi-human, uh, part human, part wolf creature? Do you think it's possible for a physical creature to appear like that? Uh, certainly, we don't have any evidence through... Uh, fossil record of anything like that what are your thoughts brother well my so so with that you know early on uh you know there was there was just a scant few reports of anything that we would call a dog man at, at one mm -hmm. point um especially uh other than beast of bray road um and going back further there was werewolf-like cases the beast of javadin and Sure. Don and and the, you know just scant reports of things like this, but it, there there's not the body of reports and things like we have now. So at one point it was few and far between. And my first initial thoughts on, especially once Linda began documenting the Beast of Bray Road case, was mm -hmm. that yeah we've got some we've got a canid here that's grown to large proportions and has taken this, some ability to stand up on its hind legs um mm -hmm. okay you know i'm like that that's entirely possible and you can put together the other reports as it goes on though the the reports have encompassed a lot more things that don't necessarily fit just a simple canid standing up on two legs yeah. at times or whatever, because there's, it's a phenomenon that has the body of work and, and the sighting log is added up really fast in the last mm -hmm. five years. And so it's, a, it's been taken in to where if, if what people describe as a, dog man cannot simply be explained by a canid now whether it's you know any sort of half human half half canid is not biologically possible so right it, it you then if it's just the if and then if we take these reports to be real even if it's a, a portion of them and they're describing this you know, wolf, wolf and thing doing what they say it can do, then there, it has to be more paranormal, paranormal in nature. There's no way about it. If we take those reports to be true, it's, it's not as simple as 
um, an evolving canid or a few of those loose, <laughs> it's uh, right. well beyond. So I don't claim to have any answer to say what it is, but that would be an example of uh, species adaptation and not necessarily evolution. If a species of wolf or canid right can learn to uh, be comfortable walking on its hind legs, right? Right. If it's you know, and and some of the Linda would say theorize that it maybe was looking over the corn, which makes yeah. a lot of sense. Like this thing would stand up because there's corn up there and that made a lot of sense. But again, the more we've taken these reports and I've just was talking to uh, the guy from the, from the North American Dogman project about one that happened in Texas where these guys actually saw one of these creatures and it sort of, they, they said they heard what it sounded like bones breaking as it stood up and it was, it grew larger and it was coming at them at Lake Texoma, really spooky encounter. And there was three guys uh, who saw this and, you know, their description to me almost sounded like even a more traditional werewolf, like a transformation. Now they didn't, it wasn't like a human that turned into a wolf, but there was some sort of, process a physical process involved in this creature coming at them and standing up and walking on two legs and everything to where it made me think of werewolf but um yeah it's just something that you know i, I haven't specialized and i i don't get very many dog man reports sometimes i get a few but um from what i know of it 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 is well beyond the simplistic answer of what we would uh, define, I guess, as a as a canid that has adapted. Right. Well, you know, that's a that would be a a, a huge adaptation uh, and a huge advantage and disadvantage at the same time for for the canids. But I, I get uh, dogman reports, <coughs> um, not infrequently, but not you know not. Like I do Bigfoot. Bigfoot has been, has been seen all over the state. I mean, you have 120 counties in Kentucky and at least 115 are represented in the, the data as being uh, Bigfoot active areas. So that's a, that's amazing right there. And it, it probably has something to do with the, uh, uh, the cave system beneath us, right? We have the largest natural cave system in the world in Mammoth Caves right here in central Kentucky. So, and, that, and that's one thing you do have there that plays in, I think, well to what your what the reports there from Bigfoot to Dogman to other weird stuff is there. There is a system of caves, and that yes. very very much provides. You know, where do where do they hide? Where do they go? Well, there's caves in Kentucky, and they're everywhere. Oh, yes, and yes. that that right there, to me, provides support for there could be things there that use these caves and they've been able to steer clear of human contact yeah and there are definitely things below our feet uh, and i have no doubt of that especially when i get a report from uh, central kentucky or eastern kentucky and it's covered in mud the creature's covered in mud and i know exactly what it what it's like to have to get down on your belly and crawl into these uh, tight caves and you get completely muddy you know and so i got several of those and uh one was a, a smaller a smaller version of bigfoot that left uh hooked footprints uh like a goat so oh, wow. strange things down there brother we don't know what's down there if we we could see what was below our feet would probably would probably kill us from fight from fright and uh they found already, I think, over 450 miles of uh, tunnels under under that uh, mammoth cave, branching out in all directions. And they estimate that there's at least 600 more miles to go. So we're talking at least a thousand miles, and that's just a guess. It could go all over the United States. You know, it's it's possible that all of these things originate from right here uh, under Kentucky ground and just go everywhere else. You know, like you said, it used to be there was. Uh, when you said Bigfoot, you automatically thought of the Pacific Northwest, right? Or, or Canada or somewhere like that. You didn't think of 
Kentucky or Indiana, yeah, or Oklahoma, or, you know, any, but these things are everywhere. It's amazing. There's at least there's there's thousands of people in Kentucky right now that have seen these things, and many of them uh, do not come forward. So judging by how many that come forward, I can probably times that by a hundred because Kentuckians don't talk to to uh, where it used to be was really we were really reticent to say anything that may would make us sound crazy, right? So you have to just imagine how many reports have not been heard or shared with anyone throughout the last hundred years. There must be tens of thousands of them. If I can uncover uh, hundreds and hundreds of them from people who are willing to talk, that's only, it only represents a very small fraction of the population here. So a lot going on here and uh, there's a lot going on everywhere, not just Kentucky. It's all over the country and all over the world. Uh, I don't think, is there any state that hasn't had uh, Bigfoot sighting yet that you can think of? I uh, believe Hawaii would Hawaii. be the only one, which makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, short of that. And, and that's another thing most casual observers do not realize is they tend to think of Bigfoot as a singular thing like the like Patty. Yeah. That's, oh, Patty, and, and that's in the Pacific Northwest. They have no idea the volume of reports in every state i mean kentucky and you know you mentioned oklahoma that to me yeah. that that i've been in that area in the washita mountains a lot and that's one of the most um you know wooded and mountainous areas down here and you don't think of oklahoma as having bigfoot but there's absolutely um a good number of of credible sightings that come out of there and I've been there and I can see why because miles and miles of forestry in places where nobody goes and um, yeah so people don't realize how many of these reports and just every state I mean every state a few of them. maybe Rhode Island probably doesn't have a lot but uh, no, I don't know how many people living there you know there's not even a lot of people I mean, but the, the skeptics will say oh yeah Kentucky doesn't have a, a large enough uh, wilderness area for a, a living uh, breeding population of Bigfoot. Well, you're making a, a couple of assumptions right there. You're making an assumption that they're a natural animal that needs to, to feed and, and all that. And you're also um, putting out some false information because Kentucky is so full of forests and mountains and, and hills and hollers and uh, I think they estimate only 30% of our woods in America have been uh, walked in by man. Well, that leaves 70%, so that totally blows the skeptics' arguments of there's not enough habitat. Uh, if, if these things need a habitat, right? So if you're a you're a creature or an, or an entity that it can become invisible, then what what limitations do you have as far as where you can go, right? Certainly only the ones you put on yourself. And that's why we have reports of Bigfoot uh, in, in the towns and in the, in the suburbs eating out of the dumpsters from restaurants, right? So they can go wherever they want uh, and you, you never know. So there would not be much limit, uh, many limits on what, where they can go and what they can do if you can't see them. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's just, there's more spaces to be than people realize. And, uh, you know, in a lot, most of these places like, well, Bigfoot can't be where in Texas is a Bigfoot. Well, there's bears that if there's some black bears, we don't have a lot, but black bears can be here. And if they're about yeah. the same size, uh, smaller even, but if they can, if they can be in these woods, so can something, uh, you know, similar, I guess, as well. People don't realize how, how much wilderness areas they are, there is. And, you know, oh, I can, yeah. I could take some of these people and drop them in the middle of, you know, the sulfur river bottoms or whatever and go, okay, you tell me there's nowhere to hide. I'll drop you in the middle of that first, see if you can find your way out. Second, exactly. you can't see 15 feet into the thicket, especially in, in spring through summer. You, it could be anything out there, and there is. And 
yeah. you know, there's cougars and wild hogs and alligators that you don't necessarily see. Um, right. And to your point, brother, I've never seen a bobcat here in Kentucky. Right. And it's just, it's really kind of right. blowing my mind that I've seen everything here, uh, even the in humanoids, but I've never seen a bobcat in its natural habitat. I had to move to Florida uh, before I ever saw a bobcat in my life. And it was right during the, the daytime. It just walked right <laughs> across my backyard and into the woods and like no big deal. But there, there are, the wilderness acre in Kentucky alone is, is expansive and amazing. And I used to go on these expeditions in different parts of Kentucky and I've walked down creeks uh, for miles and miles and miles with no sign that man has ever been there. You know, there's no uh, candy wrappers. There's no soda cans or beer cans. There's no cigarette butts. There's no shotgun shells. There's nothing. And I can easily see how there's there's places in, in this country uh, where mankind has never set foot inside. Uh, some of the places that the Indians, they, would, they wouldn't go in. And the white men have no reason to go there, right? You have only hunters uh, really go into the woods um, on a regular regular basis and see these things. Uh, it's 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 a correlation that the hunters, the the deer hunters, they're the they're the most uh, uh, represented group of people in the data. That have, have seen these creatures. So, other than hunters, you know, we don't have much reason to go in those woods, right? We don't even right. hunters won't go three or four miles into the woods to hunt deer or whatever. Uh, so, lots of places here uh, that I don't believe any man has ever stepped foot foot in. So, that's my answer to the. Uh, there's not enough habitat. I think uh, people who say that need to uh, do a little bit more research. Yeah, absolutely. That that doesn't hold up, especially like you say, if, if they're beyond just uh, if they have abilities beyond just your average creature, that makes it even harder. They don't e yeah. need as much habitat as as something else. But either way, uh, whether it's uh, biological or beyond, animals are experts. They're they're camouflage, their movement. That, that's what they do is stay stay away you know like a a cougar a mountain lion puma however you want to call it those mm -hmm. things you know they've probably been looking at us but you never see them they're completely silent they know what they're doing and that they're experts at evasion and survival and so yes you know i've never seen a i've never seen a cougar and i've been hunting since i was a kid i've been in the woods tons of the falc there's dozens of them running around i've never seen one i've seen tracks i've never yeah. actually seen one so by that definition they don't exist because people say well i've never seen a bigfoot they don't exist well i, I haven't seen a cougar myself so i guess they don't exist either right uh, I found on a the other hand yeah you have everybody saying that the the melanistic pumas don't exist in north america and yet I've seen three of them in my life right here in Kentucky. Uh, two of them were in the broad daylight. And the last instance was in 2007. We were in a work van going to work and everybody in the van saw the, the Black Panther in a field at the side of the road near some mm -hmm. woods. It was stalking deer. Uh, so, you know, can't believe everything that the uh, officials tell you. They'll tell you there's no. There's no eastern cougar or any kind of uh, big cats other than bobcats in Kentucky. Yet there are. They say that bear, there's no bears here. But the yes, eastern yes. cougar and the black bear have both made a astounding comeback in the, in this state in the last 30 years. It's, it's amazing. And yet, why, they, why will they not uh, admit that? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I don't get that. I guess it's something to do with they, if they do establish that they're there, then they have to do conservation or some additional, I don't know what, once they come out and say, but yeah, hundred percent, as much as we've heard stories of sightings of strange things, you've heard all the people say, I saw a black Panther. I saw a cougar yet. The officials say they they're not here. It's like, I literally saw one. 
So it's the same kind like, of thing. No, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, no. I'm like, you know, they're out there. And they, yeah. It, uh, you saw just, big house cats. What you saw, you did not see a cougar in Texas. Right. I, see, I seen the black bear right down the road from us, our house, like a mile and a mile and a half down the road from our house. Mm -hmm. And then my son verified it. He worked at a uh, country club, you know, big, nice country club. And I golf believe he course. Did, uh, golf course, yeah. country club. Um, he said, I believe he said the 18th hole was actually just like right in our backyard. And we didn't really realize how close the 18th hole was to our backyard. And he said that that black bear has been seen back there. So evidently, yeah. <laughs> I know what I've seen. I know what the people in front of me seen. And I know my son wouldn't tell me no lies. So they're here. They just don't want to admit it. Yeah. I've never, yeah, seen, I've never seen a black bear myself uh, here in Kentucky. Um, so yeah. evidently they don't exist, right? Do. Wait a minute, my wife has, so something's got to give, right? DNA, right. You, have to, you have to come clean, you know, because people need to know if they uh, they might be in danger uh, of being stalked by a bear or a big cats. You know, people need to know that. They have children. Yeah. They take everywhere. They take to the parks, and you, you know, they have no idea. You know, we're in Kentucky. We don't have to prepare for no animal attack. Or, you know, yeah, we're in Indiana. We don't have to prepare for anything crazy like that. But we, in reality, we do need to be prepared, especially with the children uh, uh, along. We do need to be prepared for any uh, anything that might happen. And yeah, I, I we don't need to believe what when we're told that we did not see what we saw. We know we saw this, but they're telling us uh, we, we didn't see it. So that's conditioning that uh, you're not supposed to question the official narrative, right? You're not supposed to uh, go against what you, you've been taught. And you, you've been taught all these things by people who were taught these things by other people. And it all boils down to they were taught by people who did not know. And yet they were, they taught you these things. So, yeah, a lot of things out there. You need I, to, saw, I saw something scary. Um it, I was in last summer, I was in the mountains in North, northern New Mexico, where there are bears and they do admit there's bears, but yeah. it was, <clears throat> there's some roads up there where some cabins are and it's high elevation. And I've come across, I've hiked up there and I've come across bears in the wild. I've probably seen about four, but on this, in this occasion, I was going up a road and it was probably like noon. I saw this deer jump across the path and it was a bear chasing it. I mean, wow. not, not probably 30 yards up ahead. And I mean, it, it was just like that. You heard, you know, I just heard some rustle. I saw that deer running for its life and that big bear was right after it. I was like, whoa, that <laughs> bear is serious. And I'm glad he's not chasing me. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's kill you. They're designed to kill and eat. Uh, yeah, everything that they can, and and you know, it's crazy. If they're hungry enough, and they're going to look at everything that's moving as a potential food source. So, yeah, yeah we, we definitely need to come clean and tell us what's uh, in in our backyard, so to speak. Uh, if I don't know if they'll ever come clean about the inhumanoids, but they should at least come clean and say, "Hey, look, there's a chance that you could get attacked by a mountain lion here in Kentucky, right? A black bear. Now, both of them have been filmed here." Right, you even would, uh, yeah, you would, yeah, dead. I think they can wow. they're there, yeah. It's like come yeah, on. They're there. so yeah, we need to we need to uh, take everything that we're I, me personally, bro. I take everything that I'm told by any official outlet with a grain of salt and right. a huge yeah. dose of suspicion. Uh, because it seems like they have their own agenda. Uh, and the agenda is to keep the people as stupid as they possibly can. And it's uh, really frustrating, really, for someone who's, who's seen these things himself. And you, you, all you hear about is uh, they don't exist. You know, you're crazy. And uh, when I was young in school, everything that happened to us was on the, the evening news is in the newspaper. So you can imagine how that was for, for me and my brothers in school. So that's why uh, I grew up and learned how to take care of bullies. You know, Absolutely. everybody wants to laugh at you when you've seen something that they don't believe in. 
Do you have any access to any of those old news? Re- I mean, probably the newspaper, but I'm talking about yeah. like the television shows. Do you have I any? Of did, brother. I know which channel it was, but that was in 1975. I wonder uh, if you could go down and ask them if they've got those archives. That'd be something to, uh, yeah. to see those reports or see it on television. But I don't know, yeah, if they keep that or tape over it or whether they even have archives of those shows. I don't know. but I don't think they do. But they do have, because uh, I've looked in the libraries, you know, and uh, yeah. for all the uh, print or uh, material on the Spotsville Monster, which my family was so familiar with, and found mm-hmm. several articles. And I have a full-page newspaper that uh, was about that subject. And the funny thing is, when the when the uh, when the newspaper come out and, and named our location, they they give it a, a different name. So it was a typo or something. Somebody didn't get something right. They they called it Mound Hill Road instead of Mound Ridge Road, right? So as a result of that, hundreds of monster hunters descended on Henderson, Kentucky, in 1975. And when every every place out in Spotsville, except for our farm, how ironic is that? That's not funny. a single person stepped on our farm. They were shooting people's dogs in Bluff City, and we, they were the police were staking out uh, uh, areas uh, in Bluff City and, and Hebbardsville. Uh, but yet, uh, they steadfastly denied there was anything there, anything happened, and even refused to come. Uh, help us when my, my dad used to call him, right? He didn't know what else to do. Uh, when you have some problems like that, you call the police and they come get you out of there. But there was a, it came a point where they stopped responding completely and told my dad, we're not coming out there anymore. Don't call here anymore um, with this uh, intruder, big hairy intruder story. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not coming. So that left him to try to come up with a alternative uh, to call the police, which wasn't it wasn't a very good alternative. It was a very, very final alternative in case something happened to us. He was just going to kill all of us, right? And we'd all die together instead of having one of these monsters come take one of my brothers and sisters you know, off into the woods and eat it or whatever, whatever they do with them. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it was really uh, it was a really crazy time in my life and. I have that experience to fall back on and know what's what's real and what the the official stance is and what they're willing to do and not willing to do to help people when it comes to uh, their exposure to these inhumanoids. It's really it's really embarrassing for the for the Henderson uh, the Kentucky State Police police to say that to someone. And you know, he's a man. He's he's ninety percent blind with glaucoma. Has six children and a wife. And you're saying, hey. We're not coming out. Quit calling. Quit calling us. You know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't take for granted that the, the authorities are ever going to tell you uh, what's going on for real, and don't put your life in their hands. You know. Luckily, we had a friend that lived down the road that would that would come. My dad would call him, and he would he would come. He lived about a mile from our house, and he would come in the dead of the night and make sure that we got all the kids got into the car, and we were headed out to our. Uh, to my dad's mother, my grandmother, and he would he would help us instead of the police. So uh, we didn't involve the police uh, in the last few months of, of our experience because we knew they were not willing to help. Yeah. Well, at that point, you just got to do for you, and they're not helping. So, right. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, it's it's scary when the authorities, the police will no longer take your calls. That's a scary position for the family to be in, obviously. Yeah. Well, they would come out, you know, brother, and they had their sirens on, and we lived down a, a mile-long gravel road. It was basically our, our driveway, and they would come with their sirens blaring and wailing, and uh, the creatures would just slink back into the woods, which was about 50 feet behind our house, real thick stand of woods down there by the Green River. And they would s- s- slink back into the woods, and police would come and uh, of course I don't think they believed this anyway and they would come and act like they did a search of the grounds but you know they probably just stood in the backyard and had a smoke or whatever and laughed and uh, and they would leave and as soon as they left guess what happened 
the creatures would come right back out of the woods and start it all over again. So, yeah, you know, it was, it was crazy, a crazy time. But luckily, you know, I haven't had any experiences like that. Nothing uh, even close to that. And uh, I don't wish it on anybody. I know everybody wants to see Bigfoot or Dogman, but once you do, if you can see it from a distance, that's fine. That's cool. But if you have any kind of uh, close-up interactions with these creatures, your life will never be the same, and you cannot unsee what you've seen. So to everybody that's looking for Bigfoot out there, you know, be ready for a life-changing experience if you do actually run into one of these creatures. And Dogman is, uh, I don't wish anyone would run into that thing other than me. I just want to run into one and not too big. You know what I mean? Five or six feet tall, seven at the most. If it's 10 feet tall, right. I'm probably in trouble. But once you see these things, you can't unsee them and your life changes forever. Your paradigm shifts. Your world becomes a lot bigger than it used to be with a lot more possibilities in it. Thank you, right. Justin. Appreciate that, brother. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, so it's uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, Lyle, what, what the police would ever, uh, if they would ever come forward, if, if they actually had any evidence at all, they they didn't, they didn't come forward with it. And the, the person down the road, he had cast a footprint out in our our cornfield. Um, police took that. And when they finally brought it back, they brought it back in a plastic baggie in powder form. So God. destroyed, and this is actually, actually uh, evidence of a, a cover-up by the authorities back in 1975. And they told the man who was, uh, we accidentally named him on the news, because we didn't know any, my dad didn't know anything about Bigfoot, or, and we didn't either. We didn't have any that these things were what they were but they he started to get harassed by the, the police and threatened and he was told by the police if he would if he said one more word about the Spotsville monster either in the papers or the media that he would be talking to his family through prison bars and this is a man that he's 100 percent reliable uh, 100 percent truthful uh, he's He's a, he's a Christian. He knows there are consequences in the next life to run around lying in this one. So, you know, if the government was doing it way back then, what are they capable of doing now? It makes you wonder, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you know, for sure back then they were laughing it off and just not serious whatsoever. And they don't want to hear nothing more about it because they don't want to make any reports. Right. And they're the nonsense of busting the cast up. I mean, what does that, how does that help anything? Uh, right. You know, just shoddy police work. And, they, and I think it'd be the same today. you would just be laughed at and, and the police wouldn't do anything. And after a while, it'd just be like, we don't call down here because we can't be bothered if the police could even respond these days. I mean, <laughs> right. Well, if you say Bigfoot, you know, they can't, they're not going to respond. But if you say uh, intruder, you know, they have to respond. But they went out of their way to uh, put a, a damper on any kind of uh, news about the Spotsville monster. They even went so far as bringing a brown bear to Henderson, Kentucky, and releasing it in the river bottoms. Can you imagine that? They weren't involved and didn't care. All they had to do was turn away. But no, they wanted to uh, make sure that people didn't believe. Well, no one saw the bear because our friend down the road killed it two days after they released it and buried it. So God. no one ever knew that. But they actually brought a bear here and released it so people could see it and say, hey, look, it's the Spotsville monster it was a bear. Wow. Well, that's going out of their way. Yeah, that's, that's extraordinary cool. links to uh, discredit people and and not only my family, but this man here. He was uh, he was he still is a very respected uh, member of, of the community, right? And he's mm -hmm. he's just salt of the earth kind of guy, and I I know that he would never lie, never tell a lie to me. And uh, that, those are the kind of people that you can take 
their word for granted you know, if you're not careful and you don't know him as a human being you don't know how uh, solid their character is you might not believe some of the, the things that they say but when you know know someone personally uh it's not quite so easy to dismiss right right so we're coming up on uh two hours so krista do we have any uh questions already yeah we're wow. on 37. i'm sorry Krista. Well, you guys haven't had a chance to say a word I'm, oh uh, no you're good you are good um, this was actually a donation, but there's also a question. Night Stars asks, what do you think are the reasons things have changed that makes these things more acceptable to talk about? Well, I think that on being on TV has been a big thing. Um, you know, these starting with Monster Quest and on into mm -hmm. Finding Bigfoot and a slew of mon monsters and mysteries in America, this has become a fascination and a and that coupled with the with the Facebook and the Internet and people seeing stuff like this, um, people realize that it's not just some one crazy person who lives in the woods that saw it. There's a whole lot of people who have seen stuff like this. And I think when you see it on television and you start talking about it with coworkers, and I mean, Finding Bigfoot was a very successful show. It was like the third po most popular show on Animal Planet. A lot of people are watching. Mm -hmm. So whether that that's not necessarily representative of actual research or not, it did definitely made people more comfortable to talk about it. And then the more they do, the more people, Oh yeah, yeah my cousin saw something, you know, they start talking mm -hmm. and yeah, that's that slowly, slowly the, um, the culture has changed to where people think this is more cool and fascinating and okay to share stories mm -hmm. than 30 years ago when you did better not say i mean look what happened to barton's family you better not say this stuff because people just flat out thought you're crazy the police thought you're crazy you could you could literally ruin your life you could get fired from your job i mean all repercussions yeah. and you you find this as it goes now you know you might not want to go to your job and tell them i'm a bigfoot hunter i don't know but i do i do that but, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I would all day long I'm every day, and I get it. You know, but I don't have a job. It's a uh, fun workplace. But, but yeah, that's the reason. I think just slowly become more acceptable, um, mm -hmm. as everything does. I mean, what we what people thought was unacceptable a hundred years ago now is nothing. You know, so yeah. it's there's always mm -hmm. a change in what's currently culturally acceptable. Right. Next question, Solja asks, uh, Lyle, do you have any little people stories? I'm curious ever since my own experience, she says. I don't have too many of those, um, but I do have, I've gotten a, a few reports <laughs> of what I think we would call a, a pukwudgie, um, mm -hmm. which is a smaller diminutive type unknown creature, definitely falling in the cracks of any sort of category of cryptids. Um, a guy told me that he saw one of these and it was perhaps three feet tall. And this was in, it was in Massachusetts or up in there. It was in New England. I think it was Massachusetts um, as to where he saw this. And this was a guy seemed, you know, credible guy and said he saw it and it ran up on a hill and he kind of started to pursue it. <laughs> and then he kind of got spooked and he saw it run off and he just left it at that. Um, mm -hmm. And then later kind of, then you start thinking, well, you know, what was that? Um, uh, let's see. You know, and I've gotten several reports of what sounded more like a Bigfoot, but it, maybe a juvenile mm -hmm. uh, where it was, I think was a juvenile, not necessarily a full grown, you know, maxed out in height. Uh, creature, so so I don't have a lot of a lot of little people stories, and we don't have a big history of that in the South. You know, there's mm -hmm. I know in the Dakotas and in Hockamock Swamp and up there where Pug Wedgies, there's a lot more of that. I think from what I've seen uh, in the northern states. Gotcha. Okay, um, Martin Grove has asked you, Lyle, uh, in your thoughts, what was the monster at Boggy Creek? Well, my good friend Martin, 
good to see you. Uh, you know, to me, it, it, it just falls in that category of, of just the slew of Bigfoot, Southern Bigfoot, whatever those are, uh, just another variety um, of the ubiquitous, upright, hair-covered, bipedal creatures that people see, whether it is there on Boggy Creek or whether it's, you know, in a neighboring state of Oklahoma or Texas. And in fact, I mean, those reports, um, there's, a, there's something called the Sulphur River that starts in Texas and it flows mm -hmm. across into Arkansas right through um, Falk. And the Boggy Creek feeds into the Sulphur River eventually, Days Creek and Sulphur River. Well, if you go back in time up the Sulphur River in Texas, you have sightings of basically descriptions of the same kind of creature. But of course, at the time, it wasn't identified as the Boggy Creek Monster because the film kind of mm -hmm. eventually made that famous and it was called the Falk Monster. So, and over the years, I've been interviewed hundreds of people who have had sightings and some of these very, very credible and up close um, in the best the best I can say, it's falls into the category of, you know, North American Bigfoot type creatures and uh, very similar to skunk apes or anything else. Well, good deal. And I think that was the last question. That was the last question. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So, Lau, tell us what you got coming up, brother. I know you got a lot of uh, some big musical gigs coming up. Yeah, I got a little work in music. Uh, raise those funds so I can uh, go cryptid hunting. And uh, yeah, there you go. So we uh, some kids to come up to LBL with us and uh, join the club, brother. The invitation is always open for you to get a uh, absolutely. That, come on up and we'll hunt the beast together. Yeah, that's it. That's on the list uh, to work in this year. Um, I've got uh, I've got a new book in the works. Um, which I can't really say, announce that yet, but hopefully soon. Um, I've got some follow up on that aforementioned Bigfoot report by that credible witness. So um, I'm going to follow up on some of that. Got uh, We got the Falk Monster Festival coming up in April, which is a big celebration down in mm -hmm. Falk. And that's always fun. I always go there and uh, in advance and, and uh, hang out and you know, get together with people. So that'll be fun. I've got a bunch of other events where I'll be appearing at speaking about these very topics and uh, mm -hmm. you can go to lyleblackburn.com and it's got the list of where I'll be and, you know, information about my books and uh, documentary movies I'm in and everything else, my monster sauce, um, which if I drive up to LBL, I'll be, I'll be bringing the monster sauce. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Tell us sure. what you're brother, just for the humanoid listeners. <laughs> So I have my own line. Okay, check this out. Yeah, tell there us, it is. Tell the humanoid <laughs> listeners, what's your secret ingredient? No. This delicious sauce. The secret yeah. ingredient is. <laughs> It'll be on your headstone, right? Just right. like so, so good. So that's so made good, in Texas. Yeah. That yeah. is yeah. Yeah. See it? a hot sauce. I have three flavors. I call monster sauce, and that is uh, made in small batches here. So, right yeah, we only have two. What are we missing here? I want them because I don't want to be without them. <laughs> All right. You're missing the uh, howling habanero. Oh, okay. Oh, no. That's good for dog men because it's howling. <laughs> yeah. Can you come up? <laughs> yeah, bring some so of that. You can get sure. that at my events or on my uh, online store from my website at loudblackburn.com. But that started as actually a, almost like a joke because I thought, well, I'm from Texas and I do a lot of cooking. And I thought it'd be cool if I had my own hot sauce. It'd be yeah. fun to events or something and i put it out and people loved it and i was selling it and then people asked Do you have a hotter flavor and so you know i had to start getting a range of of heat flavors and mm -hmm. people love all of them and it mm -hmm. sells well sells online and it's carried in most every bigfoot um museum or big you know uh, georgia bigfoot museum of cliff barrickman's museum oregon Monster Martin Fout. So they started being yeah. this distribution. So Lauren's got some in his crypto Lauren. museum up in Maine, right? Yeah. Maine, so it's been fun. So it's fun. You're right here right next to your uh, action figure, right? 
And yes, <laughs> at least we both have action figures. Right. <laughs> I mean, you haven't you haven't made it until somebody makes an action figure, right? You know, apparently, well, apparently, yes. And, and uh, <laughs> we're all looking forward to your next book and any of your next uh, projects, brother. You know, everybody everybody loves Lyle Blackburn. Uh, like I say, you're you're the, like the coolest guy in this field. Well, I, I actually, Lyle, just listened to your uh, your podcast on the clowns. Holy cow! If, if you people out in chat haven't wa watched or listened yeah. to that, do it. I tried to vary it up. I call it Monstro Bizarro because I I, I want to. It, it's a the the clown thing, and it was prompted by them reporting a clown sighting in my neighborhood. And I knew there was like I'd heard from mm -hmm. Lauren Coleman that there was all these um, these. Uh, you know, strange clown sightings that occurred over the years. So then I started looking into it more and I was like, wow, there's all these weird cases and clowns are scary sounding. So I, I made that episode and people, people seem to love it. Yeah, it was great for sure. Some people find clowns terrifying. My sister does. Yeah. My <laughs> sister does. And... She almost shot one come in the liquor store one night on Halloween, just joking oh, yeah. with her. She ran in the oh, freezer, got her gun and told him to get out or she's shooting them. Oh my she god! Some people have an irrational fear. So, yeah. uh, Larry Fisher says, "Lyle, my buddy Rudy Garcia was told of the two foot Bigfoot creatures uh, prayed feared, feared. feared. I think it meant feared by the Alabama Cachata. Mm -mm. Cachata, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right on. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. There's been a lot of friends and have seen a lot of things, and um, I'm blessed with a lot of lot of friends that." have just amazing experiences to share with everyone you know and it's not just a typical i saw bigfoot cross the road and here's a question brother before you have to uh get out of here i know you're busy uh, why do you think bigfoot if they're so smart cross the road in front of the cars and all they have to really do is wait a couple of seconds and cross after the car goes by and no one will ever see it right have you ever thought about that yeah, I know what you're saying. What I think is those are those are the those are a few, but I think there's a lot more that cross behind the car that we never knew about. And yeah. most of them and I think the ones that cross or do mistakes, they're almost mistakes, like juveniles, mm -hmm. younger ones that that maybe are or you know, they're agitated or for some reason they're not thinking clearly because you would think, you know, our whole object is to stay elusive. Why yeah. would I run in front of those lights? They're so intelligent. Why would they do that? They're intelligent enough not to be captured or killed. Why in the world would they step out in front of yeah, right. the, of the car over exactly. and over and over and over? Yeah, I just Thank think you, we're Thank you, Appreciate that. Appreciate your generosity. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, right? But these things are so intelligent and so lucky. Uh, then they, it would be uh, not to their benefit to ever step out in front of a car. So we right. have to, a lot of questions are still left for these inhumanoid creatures, you know, and, and some of the answers, um, they lead you to the truth about them, right? They lead you to what's going on. And I encourage anyone out there to actually look uh, for the truth. Don't take anyone's word for it. Don't take mine. Um, you can take Lyle's, though. Lyle's, Lyle's word's good. Well, actually look for yourself and try to find the answers of why why they they would act this way if they're if there's certain uh, a certain thing that you've been taught for years you know um, you've been taught that there's nothing that can be on this earth unless it's a physical uh, physical thing but uh, the the bigfoot and the humanoids don't always fit that that description so everybody please go and subscribe. We got another question. We got time for one more question, Kristen oh, Brandy. Figgy. Uh, Figgy Figaro wants to any albino Bigfoot sightings? I definitely got those. Yeah, I had some um, witnesses who described seeing a Bigfoot like creature covered in whitish hair. There's the Oklahoma. I got a bunch from Texas, and especially if you, this Lake Worth monster case, which is famous from mm -hmm. the late 1960s. Yeah, uh, right outside of Fort Worth, where I live, um, of people reporting this hairy, whitish creature um, that that was in the newspapers and stuff. So yeah, definitely 
uh, get those from time to time. My very first witness of seeing a Bigfoot was a blonde Bigfoot. It's mm -hmm. the one and only I've seen, but it was a blonde one. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. Various hair colors, you know. The, yeah. The, yeah, she also saw some of the LBL and something here just down the road from us one night coming back. Uh, <clears throat> Bill was getting a pizza. Something ran out in front of her car. It was four-legged creature. She don't know what it was. And mm -hmm. uh, the car in front of her saw it too. And both of them stopped and asked each other, "What in the world was that?" And they're like, "Well, I, I have no idea." But, and I haven't seen anything uh, since 2007, brother. But we've been together 15 years now, and she's already seen three things that she can't explain. And I was not a believer. I was married to the man that's been doing this all his life, and I was like, "Mm-mm." Yes. No, I just wasn't a believer. And one day I seen the blonde Bigfoot, and he really kind of didn't believe me that I seen it. No, I wouldn't say well, that. Okay, he wouldn't say that, but I would. Yeah, you know, it's it probably a bear, right, Lyle? You probably <laughs> saw a bear. It's always a bear. We're talking to some guys down there, and um, yeah. we never said nothing about Bigfoot or anything. He's just talking like he does to everybody. And they told us that we should have been down there that night before because they had a blonde Bigfoot down there messing with their camper. It was like eight foot tall. So, yeah, you know, it kind of pretty much uh, <laughs> corroborated what you yeah. saw there. Right. Yeah, it's, just, it's crazy. It's crazy here in Henderson County, Kentucky. I tell you that. Well, I well, thank you so much, brother, for coming on. Yes, you know, we really you. appreciate you mm -hmm. uh, taking the time to do this. And as soon as you can get up. Uh, to LBL, we're going to have some adventures together, brother. So, uh, all our best to you. Uh, we're looking forward to your next uh, album, your next book, and your next episode on Monstro Monstro Bizarro. So, you guys check him out and uh, let him know how thankful we are and, and appreciate that he's come on the show and talked to mm -hmm. us for two hours. I appreciate you, man. Always great to talk to everybody. Always great talking to you, brother. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome. And thanks again for coming on and. Uh, stay safe down there in Texas, and hopefully we'll see you soon up here in Kentucky. All right. Sounds good. See you, Lyle. Bye, Lyle. See you, Lyle. Thank you. you. It's good to see you again. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Can you put up our uh, um, donations, Krista, please? Okay. Can you see them? Uh, thank, you. thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl Badger. Thank you, Cheryl. Gary Spikes. Yeah, Gary Spikes Sr., Tripping up on you. Fisher of Spam. Night Stars. Larry, Larry Fisher. Fisher. Thank you. Look here. Yeah, we got something here. Larry you Fisher and Sons for all your roofing needs. Need a new roof? Call Larry Fisher and Sons. Ooh, I can't get it in there. You get it? Yeah, you go ahead and read those for me. Yeah, thanks for everybody. Tyler, DJ Tyler Radio, thank you, brother. We appreciate your donation. Catherine, thank you, dear. You're so sweet and nice. Liberty, thank you, brother. I enjoyed our talk on the phone the other night. We're going to talk again soon. Justin, thank you. Appreciate your generosity. Everybody hit the like and share button. Uh, Tread 10, thank you, buddy, for coming, becoming a member. Yeah. I guess I mispronounced that. Yeah, I think I? you did. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's uh, Triacle 10. Triacle. Triacle. Yeah. Triacle okay. 10. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Triacle. Scott's Life. Thank you, buddy, uh, for the memberships. We appreciate you. Kevin, thank you for coming on board. Uh, glad to have you. Brother Vic, so good to see you in the in the uh, the chat again. I hope all's well with you and your dad. Thank you so much for your generosity. We really appreciate you. He did that twice. He gifted a hundred memberships you. tonight. Well, thank you. Everybody's yeah. a member now, right? <laughs> Doubly thankful to you. Thank you, Jitesh. Brother Vic. Alan. Yeah, Alan, thanks for the super sticker, Alan. Appreciate you, buddy. Justin Boyd, thanks again. Uh, yeah, we appreciate you being here and we appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. You guys that make this worthwhile, you know, it, it takes a lot to, to do this and you have to wade through a lot of stuff. So Kevin Murphy, thank you, brother. Appreciate, appreciate you here. Sue, Sue G, G, thank you so much. Huh? And I finally said your name right. Yay. Right? <laughs> Anaya, thank you. I'm glad you like the show. Thank you for the, your donation. 
Josh, thank you, brother. Appreciate your generosity. You're always so generous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see you here. Kevin, thank you, buddy, for the super sticker. Godfather of the Southeastern Conference. See, okay, thank you, brother. I'm glad you like the show. We're, we're happy to be here and, and doing this for you guys. Okay. So thanks, everyone, so much. We appreciate you. And I want everybody to make sure that you go subscribe to Blondes and Booze. And it's such a great feeling. Yes, when we go to all of our, our friends' shows, all our recommended channels, and we see all the same people in the chat, you know that we're doing something right, right? So we got to stick together. Uh, individually, we're, we only have, like I was telling Lyle, we just have a little piece of the puzzle. But together, we might have the whole puzzle. So everybody stick together and go check out. Uh, yes, I will, brother. I'm, I'm working on it. It'll be done soon. I, I promise it will. Yeah, go check out PRT and everybody on our, our recommended channels mm -hmm. list. We're all family like family to us. Um, and we're growing. Mm -hmm. So once we get uh, uh, to a, a certain level, then I think that uh, some real change is going to happen in this paranormal community. You know, usually the um, the ghost section uh, argues with the Bigfoot section and the, they, the Bigfoot section argues with the UFO people, but we don't do that here. So we're all together and unified in our search for the truth and our search for knowledge when it comes to these humanoid creatures. So uh, we really appreciate, appreciate everyone that's sticking with us. And I see all these great people in the chat tonight. I'm sorry I can't thank each of, each of you. Uh, separately but uh i just want to say thanks to everyone here we love every one of you uh you make it worthwhile doing this and come see us next wednesday night eight o'clock we'll be right here uh doing the same thing so yeah hi brother william thank you to all of our mods we appreciate you guys so yes. very very much you don't know how we couldn't do it without you guys you know that bonds and booze y'all are awesome we love, you guys. we love you Thank guys. We love you guys. I want one more love quick you. thing and then we're going to go. Um, we're like, I believe, 35 people away from reaching 7,000. So if you guys are not subscribed, please go subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. It's free. You can get on there and just help us hit that 7,000. We would appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes, we sure would. And everybody have a great night. All right. Have a great night. Be kind to one another. God bless. And we'll see you guys next week. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. everybody. Good night. Uh, Crystal, can you get that? It's not working. Yes. Hold on. Thank you. These computer problems. Huh? <laughs> I wasn't prepared. You told me oh, you were going to do it. On my end. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Good night, Good everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks for being here. <laughs>